Welcome to the AT Tips Cast, exploring and investigating different implementation of assistive technology in public schools. I'm your host, Chris Bouguet. This is episode number 16, recorded on May 3rd, 2008. Over the past few months, a variety of listeners have been writing in with questions and comments. This episode will be a Q&A sort of episode where I respond to your emails and questions about the tips presented in the first 15 episodes. The first 15 have a total of at least 24 tips in there, all of which I hope you will find as helpful suggestions as you try and find ways to support struggling students. While answering these questions, I hope that I expand on some of those tips from the first 15 episodes, as well as give you some new tips. Now, let's get into the questions. The first question comes from Kristen from Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Hi there, Chris. Love the podcast. Just a quick question for you, though. That tip about first then boards was a really good one, but what about those kids that need multiple thens? You know, first we put our shoes on, then we tie them, then we go outside. Or first we clean our rifle, then we get in the car, then we go hunting. You see what I'm getting at, Chris? How do you extend then out further beyond just one thing coming next? Here's what you can do. Let's call this AT tip number 25, first, then, then, then boards. You can have as many thens as you need and as the student can handle. In a way, you're really making a visual schedule. The thens could flip behind each other, folding them to hide them if they're too much all at once for a student to look at. Or you can even make it like an accordion sort of thing where one folds under the other one. You could have first on top and then a bunch of thens that kind of accordion underneath. I'll have an example of a first then then board up on the attipscast.wordpress.com site. The next question comes from Cindy, who is the person that works at the desk right next to me in my office. Cindy asked, Chris, I listened to your podcast, but I couldn't make out your blog site. What is it again? It sounds like orgpress, but that's not right, is it? Cindy, thanks for sitting next to me in the office and thanks for the feedback. No, it's not orgpress, it's wordpress. W-O-R-D. So once again, the blog site is attipscast.wordpress.com. The next question comes from Topher, who used to live in Eden, New York. Hello, Chris. I've got a question for you. Super Y is a great show. I like to watch it while I lift weights and build up my humongous muscles. I like the stories because they are right at my level, but that's why I like it. I wasn't clear why I listened to your show, why you like it. Okay, back to pumping more iron for me. Ugh. Thanks, Topher. I went back and listened to what I said about Super Y, and I see that I did sort of gloss over what I really liked about it for students who are struggling. What I really like about it is that it offers different levels of reading all in the same episode. You've got letter identification, word identification, and sentence level reconstruction all in the same episode. I think that's a good thing because for students who are at a letter identification level, they are getting a dose of a higher level skill of word identification. For those students who are at the word identification level, they are getting reinforced about their letter identification skills, which ultimately builds their confidence. Great question. Keep up the good work and keep lifting those weights. The next question comes from Melissa, also from Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Hi, Chris. Your voice makes you sound so handsome. Are you that handsome in real life, and does your wife know how lucky she is? But those aren't my real questions. My real question is about the communication bridges you mentioned in episode 13. I know teachers who use a composition notebook that goes back and forth between home and school, where teachers enter in logs and parents enter in logs. Is this a communication bridge? Have you ever seen this work for students? What's your take on this? Thanks again, and keep up the good work, you handsome devil. Well, hello there, Melissa. First off, you should know that I am that handsome in real life, and I remind my wife how lucky she is every day, sometimes two or three times a day. I've seen those composition notebooks too, and they work for what they work for, but they aren't necessarily a communication bridge. The power of the bridge comes from the student being involved in the process. If the student is filling out the communication bridge, whether it's in a composition notebook or paper that gets pasted into a composition notebook, or a three ring binder, or even a bubblegum wrapper, or whatever, it doesn't really matter because if he's filling it out, then the teacher and the parent are maximizing the power of the communication between home and school. One other thing about those communication notebooks, the bridge is usually pre-scripted where the student is answering some questions about the day or evening. 
Composition notebooks by themselves are just lined paper with no direction on what to do. Students might need direction as to what to write and that is why the scripting is helpful. Furthermore, I've seen parents or teachers do composition notebooks and the entry will be, Johnny was good today or we had a bad day today. And that's it. And that doesn't help a parent or teacher know why the student had a good or bad day. If you're going to have that sort of correspondence, it should be more specific and it should be detailed. The next question comes from an email from a listener named Robert Christopher who says he used to live in Kent, Ohio. Robert Christopher writes, Hey Chris, love the show. I am also a SoundSnap user. But there is another website where you can find free sounds that you should tell people about. It's called findsounds.com. Have you heard of it? Keep up the good work. Robert, first off, did you know that Robert is my middle name? Ironic, really, isn't it? Yeah, I did know about findsounds.com. I am a huge user of that site, and I have been for a long time, and I still use it. In fact, let's call findsounds.com AT tip number 26. Sound good? I'll have a link to it on the attipscast.wordpress.com site. Thanks for reminding me of that nifty little resource. The next question comes from Shebot from Georgetown, Massachusetts. Hello, Chris. I was wondering about Bebot. I really like when he is on the show. Will he be returning? He mentioned he is being updated with new equipment. Do you know if his new equipment will have the ability to analyze websites for readability? That would be so very awesome. Thanks for the question, Shebot. I'm glad you like Bebot, and I'm sure he'll be returning in the future. I know he's been working on his voice modulation so that he can be heard even clearer on the show, but I'm not sure about the website readability. I'll pass your voice message along to him to see if he can work that into his next update. In the meantime, check out JuicyStudio.com and enter readability into the search box on that website. It will take you to a website readability check where you can enter in a URL and it will check the readability of that website. I'll have a link to the exact web page on the attipscast.wordpress.com site in case you're having trouble finding it with your own searching. I ran a readability check on the attipscast.wordpress.com site and it scored a 7.87 on the Flesh Kincaid reading level. The site does even more calculations and gives you a nice little table readout for the website. You can go back and listen to episode number 3 for reasons why you'd need readability statistics. But basically, they are useful for knowing if you need to scale down a website to accommodate for a student's reading ability. Thanks for the question, Shebot. I hope this holds you over until you get the next installment of Bebot. The next question comes in email form from Mr. B, an educator in Northern Virginia. Mr. B writes, Dear Chris, great show. I forget if it's episode 4 or 5 or 6, but somewhere around there you mentioned that you were going to try to have two tips per episode in lieu of having a discussion about AT policies. What happened? How come you don't have two tips per cast? Mr. B, excellent question. I don't have two tips per show because I'm a lazy slacker. Podcasting this show eats a lot of my free time, so it's about all I can do to get this show out once a week. I wasn't really sure how this was all going to go, but I'm into it now and I'm having fun doing it, and I hope you're enjoying it and finding it useful. The next question comes from... Well, actually, I don't know. His name got a little muddled in the message. Here, listen for yourself. Hey, Chris. This is Chris with a question about the freedictionary.com. You mentioned that in a previous episode. Did you count that as an AT tip? If so, is there anything else about that website that you like? Hey, good point there, whatever your name is. Let's count this as AT tip number 28. TheFreeDictionary.com gives you a free audio version of a word so that you or, or a student could listen to the word spoken aloud. The main page also has some other features like the translation features up in the top right hand corner which allows the whole page to be translated into another language, which is great for students who have English as a second language. It also has some fun games on there like Hangman, a Spelling Bee, and a Word Matchup game. It also has a way to create a customized word list. If a student is finding they are having trouble remembering certain words or spellings of certain words, they can add words to their very own word list. For example, if they always forget how to spell the word receive, putting the I first maybe, they could add this to their word list. Then, when they need to spell the word receive and they aren't sure how to spell it, they could pull up the website to see a list of words that they wanted to remember. 
This function could also be used to create vocabulary lists, spelling lists, descriptive word lists, transition word lists, or as I just explained, a words I have trouble remembering how to spell list. The website also has a way to increase the text size on the screen, but it only goes up to a size 13 font. A good idea, but I wish it went even larger. The website is cool, but it does lose some points for being a bit visually cluttered. This last question comes from Mr. Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Does he say his first name here? Let me look. Oh yeah, here it is. John. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. He writes, Yo dude, the show rocks. I've been using your tips in my classroom and man, it is definitely making a difference. How do I support the show? Well, Mr. Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, I'm glad you're liking the show and finding it helpful. I'd love to hear some actual success stories from using one of these strategies talked about on the show. There are a number of ways you can support the show. You can write in and let me know that you listen. You can leave comments on the attipscast.wordpress.com site. You can tell a friend and have them listen to the show. You can explain to people that you don't need an iPod to listen to podcasts. You can burn the show to a disc and give it to someone so that they can listen to it in their car on their way home from work or on their way to work. You can write a review up at iTunes so that other people can see what you think about the cast. And you can register as a fan on the Cyber Ears website. I'm working on ways to further market the show and get the word out. It just takes some time, which, as you know, is sparse right now. So in the future, I might have some other ways you can support the show. But for right now, don't keep the AT Tips cast as your dirty little secret. Share it with someone and tell them to share it with someone. Thanks to all of you who wrote in and sent voicemail messages, and thanks for listening to the podcast. I'm always looking for people who might be interested in doing bumpers for the show. If you're interested, send me an email at attipscast at gmail.com, and I'll help you put it together. It doesn't take more than five minutes, and it's really easy. Also, just a reminder that I'll be walking to raise money to research a cure for cystic fibrosis on May 19th. If you can give even a dollar, please check out the www.cff.org slash great underscore strides website to make a donation. I'll have that link up in the attipscast.wordpress.com site as well, so you can just go there and click on it to make a donation if you're interested. If you have any questions for me, comments, suggestions, whatever, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, may all your interventions be inclusive, and may all your strategies be supportive.